Hello, one and all. Welcome back to Arcade Inspiration. My name is Cilantro. Today's rolls are 2, 4, and 7. I'm pretty sure 2 and 4 are Defense and Oromancy. Pretty familiar with those trees. What is 4? Four? 4 is Sorcery. Okay, so... I'll rage for that. And... Thaumaturge. Alright. So I know this video is supposed to be about Thaumaturge, and it will be. But I wanted to take this opportunity to contrast and compare the Thaumaturge, which is Defense, Oromancy, and Sorcery, with two other classes that I'm pretty well familiar with, both of which have Defense and Oromancy. The first one being Skull Knight, which replaces Occultism uh, instead of Sorcery, and the second one being Dreambreaker, which replaces Witchcraft instead of Sorcery. So just a quick look at what the Skull Knight can do. This is one spec that I've used in the past. The idea behind the spec is that it is an AoE initiator for large-scale PvP. You rush into the enemy's area via blink or you know a mount charge or whatever you can to get in there and then you you know start off with a vicious implosion you follow up with a hell spear summon crows you all use all your defensive cooldowns and finish up with a summon wraith and the idea is that by being incredibly defensive very tanky and going forward you sort of start the fight in a way that keeps you safe, relatively safe, considering all your crowd control immunity and general you know, defensiveness. You've got you know, all, the, all the different buffs. You have uh, extra physical defense, extra health, and all that kind of stuff. And so that's your job as a Skull Knight with this particular build, as an initiator. Okay? And what we're going to do when we take a look at the other two builds is we're going to contrast this with what the other builds are trying to accomplish. Now, the thing about Skull Knight is it doesn't really put out a lot of damage. It just doesn't have damage capability. There's, you know, Mana Stars, which is pretty weak and most only is for, ch for chasing. All, almost all of your passives are relegated to defense. The only offensive thing I really take is Reprisal because it's just a simple, quick, and easy 20% crit rate that you're almost always going to have on. So might as well do at least a little bit more damage. But overall, not really built for damage, more for disruption and survivability. So now let's take a very quick look at the Dreambreaker. And here's my take on the Dreambreaker. I have not done a video proper on Dreambreaker yet, but as soon as I roll it, I will, of course, do my best to innovate in that aspect. But from what I've you know, experienced before, this is a pretty good build for Dreambreaker. We toned down a little bit on the defense and Oromancy in order to pick up a ton in Witchcraft. This build, as opposed to the Skull Knight, is uh, much more focused on 1v1 and other smaller scale fights. Um, it has a good amount of self-healing through Enervate and Earthen Grip. Uh, the reduced cooldown time ensures that you'll be able to use these abilities quite often, and because of the extra crowd control and defense that you get from uh, defense and Oromancy, it's pretty possible to more or less crowd control somebody from 100% to 0% health while also having a you know bevy of uh, defensive options. So quite a powerful build, um, but different focus, and that's what I'm really trying to emphasize here. The Dreambreaker is better in... Uh, fights that have fewer people. It's not bad in mass PvP, but it's better in fights that have fewer people, whereas the Skull Knight thrives in a situation where there's as many targets as possible that it can disrupt. And to compare both of these, now we'll take a look at the Thaumaturge. So with this approach, I've made a Thaumaturge build that's focused a little bit, well, kind of similar to what the other two are, but yet quite different. We still have a good chunk of tank ability from Defense Tree. In fact, you've noticed most of these abilities are the same. We do have Imprison, which I will uh, really think will be very useful, honestly, uh, especially when combined with Vicious Implosion and some initiation ideas that uh, may arise from this build. Um, we do have you know, all the other utility stuff from Defense and Oromancy, Readout and Liberation providing a good amount of defense and crowd control immunity. Um, you know, of course, insulating lens, which makes it easier for us to detect people who are stealth, in addition to give us, giving us a big boost to our physical defense, which synergizes quite well with Shield of Steel, and if we decide to wear plate, um, or at least carry a shield, which we should, uh, our physical defense will be quite high, which is very nice. It gives us another big boost of essentially extra hit points with insulating lens and refreshment. Um, and of course, you know, the, the crowd control removal, shrug, shrug it off, and again, liberation and readout. Um, but we get a lot more burst damage with uh, sorcery. So I can see you sort of playing this a number of ways. In a group PvP situation, you have your general defensiveness to allow you to keep alive uh, so that way you're not quite as as big of a focus on, you know, in terms of, 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 of people attacking you. You can, uh, you know, wor worry about doing as much damage as you can with flame bolt, freezing arrow, arc lightning, and uh, chain lightning at a range, you know, poking with your 25 meter range with all your spells. And when things start to come a little close, you can do a few things. You can either continue to burst down people with your damage, you know, Arc Lightning, save that for then. Um, or you can try to group a few people up. 
One of your options is to blink in with teleportation. Immediately throw up and imprison if you wish. Uh, vicious implosion to bring everybody in near you. And then start spamming all of your AoE spells that you can. Freezing Earth, Flame Barrier, Chain Lightning. All three instant cast, all three essentially AoE uh, and point blank. So you'll be able to do a large amount of burst damage to the targets near you. Uh, you'll have the ability to follow up with Arc Lightning if any of the targets are getting low and otherwise uh, going to be vulnerable to... Uh, an instant death, and if you are thinking you're going to be able to make it out of there, you can always just pop a invincibility, and that will help uh, kill some of the time before imprison is done, and hopefully you'll be able to rejoin your your party members. Otherwise, you can use a very similar situation for counter initiation. Somebody blinks into your area, you blink right towards them with teleportation, and then do the same thing, pop, possibly popping your magic circle first. You'll you know freezing earth, chain lightning, flame barrier, follow up with an arc lightning, and do whatever you please. So. I don't really see any reason to actually show off uh, this stuff directly. I, it's very hard for me to get PvP footage being as a pirate, um, which is <laughs> kind of ironic. But um, this this setup is very similar to one that I've played a lot with Skull Knight and Dreambreaker. The difference being that it is much more of a focus on damage and less on utility uh, and versatility. Um, a more straightforward build, certainly a powerful one, and one that I you know, suggest you check out, especially if you're already familiar with uh, Dreambreaker and Skull Knight. So that's all I had to say about the Thaumaturge. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.